So what I want to do is just um, uh, talk about how words are kind of used and interpreted. Um, and this is part of what, what kind of we do here. So here's the thing, right? When, when we talk about words, and, and the, one of the problems with words is that they're actually not very good. Um, they have multiple meanings, they have, you know, various interpretations. So it makes life very difficult for me, and in fact, for everybody who's, who runs a business to, to make sure the message is going through. So let me give you an example of this. Um, where I come from in, in, in the south of Lancashire, um, in the northwest of England, uh, there is a local word, uh, cock, right, which is used as a term of endearment and a greeting. You know, all right, cock, how you doing? Oh, I think, I think, well, you're all right. Completely different meaning for the rest of the country, though, isn't it? You know, and a good way to start a bar fight, actually, if you do it in the wrong place. But, um, you know, that's a great example of a word that has a completely different meaning. In fact, a very unpleasant meaning compared to a very pleasant one in some areas. So it, 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 you've got that problem in, in, in very much the same way when you're talking about your service or your brand. Um, people have expectations based on what you do, who you are, and most importantly, the circumstances around the word. So that's what I think is, is, is a really useful exercise for everybody to do. So... Um, what we're talking about is, is, is the way that words affect your voice and who, how your business is seen. And um, it, it's very easy to make the mistake of thinking a word has a meaning and that's all it has. The, the, the circumstances it's used in are very different. And if you want proof of that, go and look at the words that are used on, I don't know, an exhaust fitting center website and the, the, the words that are used on the website for the opera company. They, they may um, you know, both talk about pricing, but they'll do it in a very different way. Now, um, there's an example of what I'm talking about. If you advertise a job for an education centre nourishment consultant, that's a genuine job title, by the way, education centre nourishment consultant here in Daventry, you probably wouldn't get many responses. If you advertise the same job as food server for school dinners, you probably get quite a few. Um, you know, so you, you, the choice of word makes a difference. But it isn't always the simple one. What's important is the context for your customers for the people you want to reach out to. So using the job analogy, let's give you another example. A friend of mine, genuinely his job is he fixes cobalt proton accelerators, right? I have no idea what that is. And when he told me, I said, why do you make that job title so complex? And he said, there's only five people who do my job. Anybody who needs me knows exactly what those words mean. So that's a classic, that's an absolutely brilliant example. It doesn't matter that I don't know what a proton accelerator is. I don't got one, it doesn't need fixing. The people who do come straight to him. So when you're thinking about words, then you've got two things to think about. You've got syntax, which is the cat sat on the mat. It's the way that the, the, you know, the sentence is put together. And it doesn't matter whether it's written, broken, recording, it doesn't make any difference. That's always there. And then you've got the paradigm. And what that is, that's the choice of words. So the cat sat on the mat can be the feline reclined on the rug. It's more or less the same thing. And you change the words. And those little changes of words change your meaning. And it's the, the important thing to choose the right one, not for you, for the person you want to speak to. So, for example, um, you can say the car was blue, or you can say the fleet, well-designed saloon glistened in the sun like the Aegean Sea on a summer's afternoon, um, both of which are talking about a blue car. The second one, probably not what you want to use if you're describing the getaway car from your bank robbery to the police. You probably want to use a blue car. So circumstances uh, are what I want, what I, I kind of guess the, 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 the focus is that I want people to think about. So um, in practical terms, here's, a, here's an unfortunate truth. Once you've written the word down and published it, once you've recorded it, you've sent it away, it, your control over it is zero because it's interpreted by the person who reads it. The actual author of the meaning is the person who reads that word, or hears it, or whatever. So um, what I'm going to uh, what suggest everybody does is go back and look at your communications, look at your website, look at the, the, the you know, the footer on your emails, your leaflets, your promotional, your emails, your, your, your advertising, everything. And, and instead of going, that's what I mean, ask yourself, what does that really mean to the customer? My avatar, my target customer, is, is this right for them, not me? And if anything you come up with there, if you think it could be ambiguous or it could be confusing or it's not really important, this one, it's not how your brand 
personality sounds. It's not you speaking, not your brand speaking in the way that they want to hear it. Go back and do a rewrite. Try that exercise. So you get on.